You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 2nd, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where everyone has passed their background check. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Who's sponsoring our show today? Well, you know, there's a, a new special fresh offer from the good people at Where the Good Lord Split You, uh, Emergency Party Planners. They're now offering a You're Gonna Need a Bigger Cake family discount. Or the Trump family. Um, yeah. Have you outsourced the job of firing your corrupt idiot son-in-law and your corrupt zombie daughter to a chief of staff who's already looking for a new job? Then you're going to need a bigger cake. What you need to do is contact our presenting sponsor, the good people at Where the Good Lord Split You, Emergency Farewell Party Plan, uh, Party Supplier and Planners, and uh, use the offer code Hope Floats a Book Deal. Hope Floats a Book Deal. Yeah. Or whatever. She, you know, I, I predict that in two years she's going to be co-hosting the today show yes or yes, she's going to she marry a secret service agent and just disappear yeah you know she'll be selling real estate in southern california and but, but currently there's a very interesting theory about why she sat in front of the uh, republican house intel committee and didn't answer any questions answer a damn question uh-huh and that's because the republican house intel committee is run by donald trump yeah and whatever she says there is going to go right back to the white house via Devin nunez Right. So she's not going to say shit about anything that she might have said to the actual person who's doing the actual investigating, whose name is Bob Mueller. Right, right. So, Well, uh, and this is the corruption that, yeah. I mean, it, it became really clear to me this week, and it's always been clear yeah. in the back of my mind, but now it's really in the front of my mind that this is all about money. Yes. yes it's yes, all, yes. and if Donald Trump gets out of this whole White House experience, excuse me, <clears throat> if Donald Trump gets out of this whole White House experience $1 richer yeah. and not going to prison, it's a win for him. Profit. And so he's doing the the one thing that he's good at, which is reality TV uh -huh. and holding listening sessions with senators who play along because they have no choice. I mean, he may actually accidentally give them something they want, the Democratic senators. So yeah, yeah no. <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the... Well, and, and let's face it, yeah. uh, a lot of them uh, will still be around in 12 years. Oh, yeah. Right. And have to live with what they did. And yes. so they're going to be... They're going to maintain professionalism and they're going to maintain... Sure. Um, even though... <laughs> You know, they were rolling their eyes afterwards or mm -hmm. as as uh, Chris Murphy, you know, just tweeted to the president and said, look, so I guess everything you told us on camera yesterday is false. Yes, as it always is. It as always it always is. It always as it always is. Yeah. And and uh, the same with Ana Navarro said, so did this la did this promise that you made on camera last longer or shorter than the DACA promises you reversed yourself on, oh, you know, the gun promises and the and it just nothing matters, except I do feel as though Trump now this uh, tariff thing. Yeah. Which we're going to get into. Yes, we this are. This tariff thing is just like the wall. Yeah. And it's just like undoing Obamacare. Yeah. And it's just like everything else that Trump has, quote unquote, promised to get rid of Muslims. He wants his base to believe that he did it. Sure. And they will. <laughs> And nothing, and they will, and nothing else matters. Well, and, so, and the other thing he is good at is sitting at a table with yep. people that he may or may not fire, mm -hmm. and being dramatic. Yep. Uh, so hey, reality what, TV, that's it, the thing he's good at. And so yep. he brings the cameras in and performs this little ritual where he pretends to listen to people. Yep. Uh, which might play really well uh, in the double wide uh, crowd in Sister Fuck Arkansas. But everyone else in the world with a functioning IQ above room temperature is watching a complete blithering idiot who needs to have things like, how does a gun work? Explain to him <laughs> in front of a billion people over yeah. and over again. Has no idea how anything works. Has no idea how DACA works. Has no idea how due process works. Has no idea how a bill becomes a law. Has no fucking idea about anything. So when Diane finds the due breaks, process. Yeah. Well, when she breaks out her little piece of paper and says, this is what happened to gun deaths 
when there was an assault weapons ban. You see, that's a very small number. Before, <laughs> there was a big number, and after <laughs> after you fuckers got rid of it, it got to be a big number again. See, there's a small thing and a big thing. And then you, I have expect her to say, good night, moon. You know, just because <laughs> he's a well, fucking idiot. But also... Then he started taking all of the proposals at the table and pasting them together into one giant bill that everyone would be happy with. Why can't we mishmash Ex- everything together? Except, <laughs> except for, <laughs> except for the West Virginia quote unquote Democratic senator. Yeah. You know, Steve Ma- or Manchin, Manchin, Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, big Joe Manchin. Uh, and and I look, I would not vote for Joe Manchin, and I understand. I've had fights on Twitter about this all week, and I'm finally done talking about Joe Manchin. Right. Having lived in Birmingham, Alabama for 14 years, uh-huh. I can tell you, speaking as the ex-wife of the president of the ACLU of Alabama, uh-huh. we would have killed to have Senator Doug Jones elected Yes, during that 14-year period. Yeah. That's who- I don't care how conservative he is. He's got a D after his name. Right. And at some point, we in the Democratic Party have to just stop over-intellectualizing everything and go for the win and and borrow that page out of the Republican playbook. Well, and we can- uh, Get the power and then fight and, and between we, yourself. That's fine. But we need to do something after that, which is yeah. we need to – once – you know, when Barack Obama had a – a United Congress, allegedly, yeah. for four minutes and got a whole lot of shit done and yep. then paid for it for the rest of his, his yep. administration. Why? Because everything under the sun was now jammed into that seven month period. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And with no mention of the fact that, well, Joe Lieberman stabbed us in the fucking back. That I'm hanging on to my majority by one vote on everything. Right. And so right. everybody has a veto power. And frankly, uh, there's a whole lot of people in the, in the Democratic Party who shouldn't be in the Democratic Party. Right. That's just the way the system works. Right. But we need to, after we win, do what Republicans do. Go mm-hmm. on the attack. Yep. You know, you should, you should be, Chuck Todd should be shitting himself at the yes. idea of right. a Democratic majority because everyone, everyone is sort of sitting around waiting to breathe a sigh of relief so we can go back to the Republicans being the asshole racist minority party who just mm-hmm. holds everything hostage. Right. And Democrats flailing around trying to get anything passed and people like Chuck Todd sitting in the middle going, Obama lead. Why? Right. Why won't Obama? That's what they want. That's the status quo for them. And right. Democrats need to really, really change that equation. That's the mm-hmm. missing piece. The missing piece is you need to take the game to the people at who the executives of the television networks. Well, and to- I think that's starting to happen as uh, these Parkland students take over uh-huh. our party, uh-huh. and uh, the striking teachers in West Virginia take over our party. And Moms Demand Action take over our party, and it starts to be about issues like wages and guns yeah. and, you know, the human welfare of our kids. Yes. Uh, when it's about those things, uh, then J- Joe Manchin's don't survive that. Well, and I'd like to talk one one second about Joe Manchin and I, then – yeah. Yeah. Let me just say, Please. we have to have the power first. Yes, first you get the when power. When you have a majority, mm-hmm. then go primary these folks. Yes. And that's where we need the majority in the House so that we can primary those blue dogs and get them out of office. Yes, indeed. It's a little harder in the Senate, I realize. Uh, and it's harder because those are statewide elections. And you are looking at states that have enough conservative. There still are conservative Democrats in this party mm-hmm. and uh, in certain states. Uh Next door in in Missouri and in West God, it's West Virginia for God's sakes. Yeah, West Virginia, are you? <laughs> I am all for. Believe me, uh-huh. if you live in West Virginia and you're listening to this podcast and you're a good liberal, liberal God bless you. If you want to run a candidate in West Virginia, and and go as left as you can in West Virginia, go go populist left and try to win that way. Great. Right. Let me know. I'll send you five bucks. I'll send your candidate five bucks and I'll tweet about it and I'll make I'll make noise for you. But if you're sitting in California bitching about West Virginia, right. you have no idea how hard it is. This is a this is the conversation I've had with Middle Child about the <laughs> about the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Which is because I, I she's she's uh vegan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she's full she's full Bernie vegan right. hippie hair. Right, but and she's the future. And but vegan, great. she's vegan. No. That's her. She's it's not, not vegetarian. It's vegan, and yep. 
And I tease her gently, but I don't make fun because I respect why she has reached the decision she's reached. So we, I, I pose occasional, you know, theological questions about what if, you know, is it wrong to take the labor of animals to plow a field to plant vegetables? Things like that. But soybeans beans nope. for all your for all your tofu. Yes, but, but, you, but you're robbing <laughs> the animals of their labor by uh-huh. doing that. And anyway, just questions like that. And we have fun. We're not, we don't tease her. We don't make fun of her. We make sure she gets what she wants to eat. So that's not a problem. But we have had the conversation about, okay, what happens in the zombie apocalypse when the only thing you have to eat is a can of Chef Boyardee SpaghettiOs? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, well, I'll I'll eat it because that's what I have. I don't have a a complete menu of options available to me when civilization is intact. What I have is fucking West Virginia. What I have is starving to death or eating SpaghettiOs. Those are my two choices. The third choice, the, well, what about the Bernie candidate? What about the, what about the, the what, where's our Tammy Duck? No, no, no. They don't have that. They you don't have that. You can look the fridge all you want. There's nothing in the fucking fridge there, but nothing and a, a two-year-old can of SpaghettiOs. Those are your two right. choices. If mm-hmm. you don't like those two choices, move to West Virginia. Move to West Virginia and fight, and and I'm all for right. that. I like I said, and let me know if you are calling, if you are in West Virginia fighting for progressive causes, yes. uh, you know, and making dents in that. Go for it. Let me know. I'll support you. I want to support you. I can't move nope. there, but you know, <laughs> I paid my dues in right. Alabama for 14 years. I've been through that, and you have you have to open the fridge and take what you can get, and that's not. Um, and also, I think too, uh, this this is where the analogy with middle child also works. Uh, she is eating from a position of privilege, she and she knows it. Yeah, she can order, you know, soy uh, tofu food when we have Chinese food. She can order tofu sure. and get it. And we don't say no. We can only afford, you know, beef chow mein. Mm-hmm. Sorry. In a can, that's, that's, all, we that's can all we can afford, so let's do that. Oh. But we, we accommodate her. And there there's fresh fruit in the fridge, and she has, you know, she can make frozen fruit smoothies and everything else because she has the privilege of a grocery budget that allows for those kind of things. Uh, and she does use her babysitting money to she order, does. you know, what is it? Um, hemp. hemp. <laughs> her hemp powder. Her hemp powder. And... I don't pay for no. that. No, no she, she's sincere about it. And she, she is, yeah. this is, you know, we have in this house a, a you know, young people who are becoming admirable citizens who yeah. may or may not hold right. positions I agree with, but they hold them from a position of integrity. Who, who and, and she's really thinking yeah, about it. And think yeah. it through and act on it. They, they do follow through on their actions. These are people who are. And she's having an influence on me. I eat vegetarian more often than I did before she became vegan and find out, oh, look, these are really good. This roasted vegetables are really good, and this is tasty, and that's wonderful. It's great to find and, these things and out. The, part of what we do on this podcast, I hope, is not just talk about mm-hmm. the present, because the present is very important, and not just give people vocabulary to understand, you know, here's the world you're looking at. Here's a lens to see it through. Oh, now it makes sense. A uh, uh, youngest mm-hmm. child was trying to figure out if she popped a contact lens the other day. Yeah, and, right, right. You know, our job is to help you understand, to, to help bring the world into a little bit of focus so you can understand the big picture, what you're seeing, why things are the way they are. But the other thing we do here, which is where Science Fiction University comes in from time to time, is talk about the future. Mm-hmm. Talk about where we're going and what you should look for down the road. And I think, by and large, in our writing collectively, uh, and a lot of the writing on the left, and this podcast specifically, we've been very successful about saying, watch out because this thing is coming. Watch out because this trend is on the way. And nobody wants to get back to the status quo of the way things were when Barack Obama was president, then Joe Scarborough and mm-hmm. David Brooks yep. and Michael Gerson. That, that's the world that they built for themselves. They built a world where they, they were very happy and very prosperous living in a perpetual state of angry minorityhood where they could right. blame everything on the fucking liberals, throw up their hands, and the dog would never catch the car. The actual psychopaths who, who, who are the base of their party would never manifest themselves into an actual person who would become an actual candidate, who would become the actual president. But now all of those right. things have happened. They, they got everything they wanted. All of their worst impulses are now sitting in the White House screaming about tariffs. Mm-hmm. And this has fucked them. And so one of the yeah. things that, that you all out there in the, in the listening world, you all have been very good about both sides, by the way. Extremely good. I have been inundated with tweets and emails and reminders of just 
we, we spotted yep. one here. We spotted one there. Yeah. It's, it's like um, whatever, geo something or other. You, you go around the country looking for piles of rocks. Right. Um, <laughs> and you find them. Geo tracking, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, people are, people are, Noticing, noticing that it. and and people are starting to notice trumpism yes, they are oh yes they are trumpism is the secret code word that tells you you're, you're dealing with a lifeboat and builder you've written the definitive piece on that for crooks and liars yes both. i have it's called it's called don't you dare yeah. call it trumpism <laughs> and, and, it's, and 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 uh, the extension of that is um uh, blaming the Demo- the congress as opposed to the republicans and right blaming the congress White House. washington yeah. yes now, we've seen a lot of that right. we've seen a lot of our our fellow podcasters uh, who, yep. who have larger platforms but they're catching up with what we say which is uh very rewarding it's not washington it's republicans Republic. it's not congress it's republicans right. it's not the system it's republicans and we can go back and, and point out that remember in 2006 when it was delayism oh yes, yes. oh yes. here's a david brooks quote from 2006 job. it was delayism it was, it was not and then it was grovism, it was grovism. No, no 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 yeah what, all these things have one thing in common it's the same fucking party it's your party yep. and it's your party. So the next thing to yeah. look out for, which is happening everywhere, this is the Mona Sharon thing. This is David Brooks's column today. This is this is right across the board. It's, it's two years it's ago. It's Chris Matthews. It's, it's every it's two yeah. years ago. What about Trumpism? It, well, it, and, yeah. and, and watch out for two years ago. Two years ago is now now the time horizon. Right across yep. the board, every one of them, every one of these fuckers, yep. ex- with with a rare exception, Bruce Bartlett being a rare exception, all mm-hmm. of them ha- have decided that the Republican Party blew up. Two years ago. It began, and history began when Donald Trump came down the escalator. And, and we would not necessarily notice this, but for the mm-hmm. fact we were pointing out, wait a minute, when did history, how, how is it we all agreed suddenly that history began January 20th, 2009, and right. we're going to pretend the Bush right. administration never happened? Well, that was the same people. Exactly the same people decided, now that Barack Obama's been elected, we're going to pretend the Bush administration never happened. And, we're gonna... and, that, and that is the case now. With, with Trump. Trump. Now we're going to pretend and, the Obama administration never happened. And and someone tweeted yesterday about, you know, once President Kamala Harris is inaugurated, we'll go. the New York Times will go around asking Trump supporters how, how they feel about her. And I said, no, they won't. No. They'll, it'll be Trump who? Mm-hmm. And there'll be this get, the rallies for the New American Right Party. Mm-hmm. And Fox News will have free advertising for days and days and then big rallies where – Trump on-air personalities will attend the rally, yes. but not participate in the rally or sponsor the rally, but they'll be there. And, and remember, so that watch for the big Fox News truck. The entire, we, since right. we who lived through it know, the Obama administration was eight years of solid racist sedition and obstruction from the right that began exactly. with birtherism and ended yes. with a stolen Supreme Court seat. And yep. all of that is gone now. It never mm-hmm. happened. The Republican Party went bad two years ago, period. And all of the people who control the microphones and control the cameras and control the printing presses, with a very few rare exceptions, are all sticking to that fucking lie. And it's so conspicuous that they've all decided, look, if we ever start talking about how we really got in this position, we're all unemployed. We're all going to get fired. And and we'll be lucky to just get fired and not driven out of this country with pitchforks and torches. So we're all going to agree... Right, Joe? Yep. Right, David? Yep. Right, Gerson? Yep. All of them. All of them agree that, that two years is it. And so keep an eye out for it because you'll see it cropping up over and over again. It usually comes up in the same paragraph as Trumpism, but it is a complete um, uh, erasure, an Orwellian erasure. And the reason that we on the left saw this coming and predicted it is because we've already lived through it three or four times. And we remember the past. We remember the past. And that's our job is to remember the past. Drew Glass, uh, we're going to do a news roundup. Yes, let's do it. And I would like to start with the good news. Yeah, a couple um, pieces of good news. Because um, Moms Demand Action had a meeting in Saint in the St. Louis area yesterday. You want to tell people who that is? Uh, Moms Demand Action is a gun safety organization, yep. uh, I believe formed after Sandy Hook. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but they are the legislative uh, cudgel for gun safety, gun restrictions, making sure that particularly state legislatures, pass laws that will uh, make this situation better with with mass shootings and so forth. And uh, they had a meeting in suburban St. Louis yesterday. Again, Missouri is one of those reddish purple states, uh, right of center on lots and lots of things. And uh, instead of about 80 to 100 people, they had 1,500 people show mm-hmm. up. Uh, it is... Uh, 
times are changing yes, they are. and people smell success and are willing to commit to something that where they can make a difference and they know they can win. So everybody loves a winner. <laughs> I do not I do not question the sincerity of 1500 people showing up. That's not my point. No. But if you will you will think about getting out of your house and going to something if you know you're just hitting your head against a wall, mm -hmm. whereas if you smell victory and you know you'll make a difference and you can change the legislature, mm -hmm. you're going to show up. And they showed up in Springfield. And they showed up in Springfield this week uh -huh. as well and passed the house passed uh gun restrictions uh for under 21. Uh, I believe bump stocks. It was a it was a comprehensive bill that this woman legislator had been trying to get through for a long time. Uh huh. And people came over and just patted her on the back because they knew how long she had fought for this. And, and it was it was her it's and timing. You know, it's well, timing. And, and the Chicago Cardinal, yes, of the Catholic Church, of the Catholic Church, uh, came down and held came a down. news conference yep. in the in the Capitol and said, "No, we we have to have stricter gun laws." Period. Full stop. Yeah, he's the one. He's the one that's on the streets of Chicago. He's one of these badass priests who's out there in the in the inner city, doing, uh, you know, the work of Jesus uh, among the poor, living among the poor, ministering to the poor. And uh, he said, "No, come on." <laughs> and, Meanwhile, yeah, so the, the head of the Catholic Church in Springfield. Yep. Uh, oh, just told Chick Durbin he can't have uh, communion anymore because <laughs> abortion. He's a dick. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Senator Durbin? You know, you and I have met on a few occasions. Yeah. We, we know some of the same people. Let me just tell you a little thing about the church I go to. <laughs> <laughs> you can have communion any time at our church. You get you get the cracker. You walk in, you get, you get the get wine. <laughs> we have gluten free. It's we're in English, so none of that Latin free. nonsense. We're one of the few churches in in, in America. Uh -huh. That has open communion, actually. Yes, we do. United we Methodist. have a, a, you can uh, go in, you can we go have a rainbow flag yeah. in front of the room, some of the rooms that yep. uh, as a welcome. So you really you wish atheists that. whatever here have a cracker. You yeah. want gluten free? Go down to the go down this side of the aisle. Yes. <laughs> we got it over here for you. <laughs> okay. so I got you. I got you. Just come on in, we'll kick our tires, check us out. Yeah. And but uh, it is. It's but, full open communion to anybody yeah. who comes in and wants communion. Gets but this it. was at the state because I was wondering. I was it, it, going through my head. I was zipping around the other day, going, "Jesus, the streets are kind of full." Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The legislature's here. <laughs> the lobbyists are here. The yep. the reps and and the senators it's are here. It's a company here. town. Springfield's yeah, the, company town. Yeah. The price of hookers has doubled. <laughs> uh, I don't doubled. know about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can I can, I only know from sitting in the barber chair listening to the other gentlemen talk. But, so drift class, I got more good news. Let me change yeah. a little more good news. And and sure. it's uh, this is still unresolved, but I want to applaud the West Virginia teachers who are striking. Yes, this is a genuine wildcat strike, my folks. This is <laughs> this is amazing. Uh -huh. uh, the unions made a deal with the governor to get them a five percent raise, and they said hell no. Uh, let me make sure I can still hear you, drift class. Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, uh, I'm reading this from Bloomberg Markets. <laughs> yeah. Okay. West Virginia teachers say several factors convinced them to take the risk of striking in addition to rising health care costs and unusually low pay. The state's average teacher salary is 22 percent below the national average. Holy shit. They found safety in numbers. The state already has hundreds of teacher vacancies because they don't pay their teachers. Duh. Uh, that makes existing employees that much more valuable. They took away collective bargaining from the teachers. They took away, they aren't allowed to um, make non-union teachers pay into the union dues. That court case from Illinois that's going to the Supreme Court that will basically decimate uh, public sector unions by saying, uh, you don't have to pay dues if you don't want to join the union. And so right. uh, that's going to and, and that is going to I am sure Gorsuch is going to vote, you know, right wing on that. Sure. Uh, but this has already been taken away in West Virginia. They already have that loss of revenue, mm -hmm. which is another reason why it's the teacher striking and not the union striking. Right. Yeah. Yep. The union bargained with this governor and said five percent will take it. And <laughs> here's Catherine Pizzino, Mrs. Pizzino who's in her 29th year of teaching math. Mm -hmm. God bless her. Here is her quote. What's the worst that could happen? They fire me and I have to go get a job that pays more money. <laughs> Don't fuck with math teachers. Yeah, no. She said, the attitude of many, many teachers, oh, the attitude of me and many of my colleagues is that, hey, you're losing right now. You have nothing to lose. So, go, you know, take away collective bargaining. Take away the right to strike. Take away the right to uh, collect dues, take away uh, everything, you know, 
health care, take away salary and so forth, and you won't have any teachers left. Right, and, which is the idea. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, that's government money. <laughs> I really am wondering. I mean, it's it, this is a tough balance beam to balance on. But I really think it's time for progressives to make the case that Social Security and Medicare are government-funded programs and do the math and figure out at what age for men and women, it's, it's two different numbers based on gender because of the way people work. Women take time off to have children and men don't. But to, to look at um, at what age does the average Social Security recipient run through the money that they paid into Social Security? Yeah, and the and the reason I say that is I don't want to shame anyone who's getting Social Security. On the contrary, but I want it to be understood, particularly among white Americans uh, and particularly white women Americans, who are the ones that outlive everybody, <laughs> that this is a government program to protect you from poverty. Yes. And the conservative argument that I paid into this my whole working life and I deserve it because I paid into it. Uh, give me my money. You know, give me the money I paid into it. At some point, that money does run out. What you paid yes, it into does. it, even with yes, interest, even and with, with health insurance, interest, with with health insurance too. At and some point, health, if yeah. you are unfortunate, um, the money you paid into Medicare your whole life, right? Will, you, will, you'll burn through it in a year. Yeah, well, and and that's what I mean. Medicaid that pays for people to be in nursing homes is not paid into the way that right. Medicare is. It's not budgeted that way. Um, and there, there is, you know, it, you have these conversations and all of a sudden you're having conversations about death panels and killing grandma. And I understand, right. you know, that that is the political argument against Medicaid limitations. Uh, but there is um, arguments to be made. Uh, and, and I thought that, you know, uh, there's not there's a lot about Obamacare I don't like. But these end of life conversations that Obamacare paid for are tremendously valuable mm -hmm. and making decisions, make allowing seniors and their children and their uh, fam other family members to make informed decisions about how much surgery am I willing to endure to stay alive? How much am I willing to do mm -hmm. uh, for some people? It's everything. It's I want extreme measures taken to save my life. And, yes. you know, I don't care if it's painful. I don't care if it's long recovery time. You should do everything to save me and keep me alive. And I understand yeah. that. For my mom, it was the opposite of that. And it had been yeah. the opposite of that her whole life, she had told me. I mean, that was one thing that was tremendously comforting about losing my mom uh, in November of 2016 was, number one, she never knew that Trump was president, <laughs> which, <Yeah. laughs> thank God. Um, and secondly, uh, she had told us. Since I was a little girl, I knew, look, if if I am terminal, uh, I want to go. Don't yeah. put me in a machine. Don't cut me up. Don't do lots of surgery. Don't try to don't try to put me on some huge chemo thing. I don't want that. I want hospice and I want to pass away. And yeah. and she told us that during her life when she was healthy. And when we found out it was stage four ovarian cancer, she told us again, you know, let me go home. Let me be with my dog. Let me have hospice care at home. And and so the and the entire family, because she had communicated that, knew that her whole life. Right. So I, I'm bringing all of this up because there's a there is a cost associated with this. And we need to we need to control costs by law. This this idea that and this is something Joe Scarborough said this week of, you know, the reason we can't have uh, progressive in in the White House is they'll they'll do this Medicare for all thing, which is going to bankrupt America. Yeah, fuck you, Joe. <laughs> no, no. Uh, show me the country that's been bankrupted by universal yeah. health care. They have well, no, been he, bankrupted because they've controlled prices, right? He he has to reverse engineer his yeah. um, independence. His, 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 his newly discovered independence. Yeah, I'm right. not going to vote for a fucking Democrat is what he's really saying. That's really what he's saying. And because I will I'm find a Republican. A reason. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 this is where actually talking to people like this is a complete waste of time Yeah, because they will find another issue on which to uh, uh, build their bridge out of the Republican Party into the beautiful land of independence. Right. Well, before we get off on that tangent, I do want to just say more power to you, West Virginia teachers. Yes. And uh, I think this is going to repeat. I think you're going to see this a lot in the next decade. Uh, and the future belongs to those who are willing to fight. So uh, 
this and you know and this let's face it there's there is a connection here this is the state of mansion this is west virginia mm-hmm. it is uh a lot of these teachers vote republican folks mm-hmm. they do uh but they are being radicalized by having everything taken away from them and and that would do it that'll do it and and it's it's happening to so many the success of the wealthy to make the rest of us poor boy take away everything go ahead give us nothing left to lose right and then look what happens the, the, well and you know what the kids in the kids in florida had nothing left to lose right uh, they'd been shot yeah. at nothing left to lose uh at some point it stops being courage and starts being fuck it you know, so, I've well, got nothing being survival, left to do, right? Protecting your life, protecting the lives of your friends. Right. right. This whole, you know, the, the whole David Brooks column today, which I won't talk about, was was about the culture war, and that <laughs> this might end the culture war. And and some very smart young person pointed out on the Twitter, no, it's about public safety, you asshole. Yeah. Yeah. This is just what if you live in a gated universe where this no this shit ever touches you you get to play with people's lives in abstractions but you know you need to be dragged the fuck out of your little bubble Mm -hmm. and have your nose rubbed in the real world a little bit and that's why the other thing that i think the obamacare failed to provide is end of career counseling (laughs) (laughs) you know because some mighty heroic measures have been thrown into extending the lives the professional lives of some really shitty people. End of career uh, really counseling. Should have... You need to go. I Can we give something to, to Orrin go. Hatch also? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> Orrin Hatch has to go. I'm just every half of every pundit in the most every pundit in in on the New York Times uh, masthead. Yeah. Um, half the assholes on television uh, have no business being there at all. The, the problem with our national conversation is is I I think I mentioned to you last week we we don't we never had a national conversation about national conversations. And the reason we can't have a national conversation about anything is that every single fucking one of them leads directly to the problem that, oh, we, one of our two polit- political parties is insane. Yep. Hey, Drew, I have is... a question for you. Yes, Blue Gal. Why is Devin Nunez not in jail? Again. <laughs> end of career counseling. Yes. Devin Nunez should never have been in this position. Paul Ryan should never, ever, ever have been head of the House of Representatives, mm-hmm. and, uh, Speaker of the House. Devin Nunez, now that we now know for a fact... That the the shit that got leaked from the Intel Committee, the Senate uh, Intel Committee, this is yeah. crossing the streams, which is really bad. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. You don't mess with done. the Senate's shit, and the Senate doesn't mess with your shit. No, and that's that is yeah. a, an impeachable, fireable, get the fuck out of here offense. Yep. Uh, which has been this is ex- exactly why I believe Hope Hicks is not talking to these people because she knows exactly who who they work for. Devin Nunez is an absolute criminal, mm-hmm. an absolute leaking Trump Russia fucking stooge. Yep. Everyone knows it. Paul Ryan knows it. And Paul Ryan is 100% derelict in his duty for so many reasons. <laughs> but one of which is absolutely refusing to force any discipline on his party. Yep. He just, whatever Donald Trump wants. Well, I think Paul they're Ryan, doing what he wants them to do. Yeah. And he can't say that. So he just says, well, I'm not in charge of that committee. No, yeah, you are. You are. Yeah, you are. You're the Speaker of the House. You could do it. You could do it tomorrow. But he's not going to do it because, let's face it, Paul Ryan is the problem. Mitch McConnell is the problem. Devin Nunez is the problem. Are we seeing a common thread here? Yeah. Well, it's not Trump. It's the Republican Party. And they all have to go. If you have an R after your name, you're the problem. And it's really that simple, this election. And I have uh, one thing that hasn't been talked about more than I wish it had been is the fact that of all of the Trump, uh, of all the Russian trolling, um, the blacktivist stuff. Yeah, yeah. About... You know, don't don't vote for one of these two. You should vote for a third party. You know, the whole idea of you should definitely piss your vote away yep. was not a grassroots, homegrown anything, and it was, but it was deeply encouraged by the people who wanted Trump to win. And the idea that you have people like Matthew Dowd still out there pretending, and his, you know, I've kept track of all of his tweets over the time, who were who were just thrilled. To be able to say on the on the eve of the election, oh, I'm not voting for either of these people. Yeah. Because you know both that whole thing about disruption and both sides are equally bad. And Hillary Clinton's terrible. That has all fucking disappeared. Every one of those people, every one of those people that was complicit in this, that went along with it, that turned up their nose at at voting for D because it was impure, and who let Donald Trump win. Every one of those people should be unemployed tomorrow. Professionally toxic tomorrow. And that's part of what our job is. Yep. Making sure. At some point in the future, when the decks are cleared, that these accounts are settled. Our job is to remember this shit. Um, one of the things I do want to mention, just in passing, in terms of the media, is the New York Times 
internally, begging its reporters not to complain publicly about how shitty their op-ed is. <laughs> And then, and then I, I'm surprised that that the, <laughs> they did that and not the Wall Street Journal because that's yeah. been Wall Street Journal's problem for decades. But oh yeah, but, yeah, but it really know, is. And, and then of course it comes out that that's what they yeah. asked for privately. <laughs> you know? Be- and because everyone, I, I believe everyone on the sort of actual journalism side knows that the op-ed side is a shithole. Yeah, well, is a place that you that you let David Brooks and Brett Stevens, little clones of the of the same. David Broder DNA, that, that David Brooks DNA, just let them run wild. Yeah. And you don't ever intervene. You don't say they anything. They don't show just... up to the building to work. They no. write from home and do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So. And as a punishment for being so very shitty at everything, <laughs> uh, PBS has announced that they're going to have a brand new talk show, honey. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. They're going to have a new show. Called In Principle. Oh uh, no! It will air on Friday nights on on PBS, and it will star uh, Michael Gerson. Oh no! And Amy Holmes. You know oh, Amy Holmes. Oh no! Oh yes, from the Blaze. She's so, terrible. So uh, one extreme right wing whack job, and one former Bush speechwriter who believes that the entire Republican Party went to shit two years ago before that was fine. That's the that. Is the this is my this is my nightmare scenario because this yeah. is what's happening no, to the media. She's she's the one who said that Barack Obama um, actually liked birtherism, that it sure. benefited him politically. So it was a good thing for Barack Obama to have birtherism. Yeah. But th- this is the template for this yeah. is why. And she said Joe that Star- as an African American reporter, and that's <laughs> that's she's just a bad she's just bad. Yeah. She's a ho- terrible person. But this is this is. The our our bright Bill Crystal Joe Scarborough future. Yeah, which is where the Overton window has been moved to a place where the left position is Michael Gerson, mm-hmm. and the right position is Amy Holmes. Right, and liberals who 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 have been warning about Michael Gerson and Amy Holmes and the Republican Party and the conservative movement all along are nowhere to be found. Right. We, we have simply we've been washed away, like the entire Obama administration, like the Bush administration, like the Clinton administration. We just are we just vanished yep. from from sight. And that is what's coming. Unless we raise our voices loud enough to make people like Chuck Todd as afraid of us as he is of the right, yep. then this is what's going to happen. You and I will simply disappear. Our voices will disappear um from the mainstream completely and be replaced by David Frum <laughs> on one side <laughs> and Hugh Hewitt on the other. Yeah. And that's that's our future. That's the, that is the future of media. Uh, unless we intervene. Let's have some more happy news, Drift Glass. Yeah. <laughs> well, Democrats. Democrats, go ahead. They flipped state legislative seats in Connecticut and New Hampshire. And the third state that they lost, and I believe that was in Kentucky, um, the swing for the Democrat, you know, which who didn't have to run. Let's right. face it. This is where you want to challenge everybody everywhere. Mm-hmm. The swing was 28 points. Yeah. And and the, <laughs> but this just, is this is a district. OK, this is a district where Donald Trump won by 60 points. Right. That's how right. gerrymandered and Republican it is. Yeah, and so for someone to say this woman who swung things by 28 points isn't liberal enough, mm-hmm. doesn't pass my test for mm-hmm. being a real progressive. She's, you know, in favor of Medicare Plus instead of Medicare for All, and we can't have that. So, look, I get it, but you got to deal with what you're dealing with here, and let's get some points on the board, and let's win some things and get some power, and then start fighting for uh well, you know, even then, we're going to there's going to be compromises even within what we get. I mean, yeah. it, it's important to fight for what you want mm-hmm. uh from where you are. And I'm all for people who are in safe blue districts fighting for the most liberal person they can get. What and vote your heart in the primaries. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. This uh, is why the, this stuff about Diane Feinstein doesn't bother me in the slightest. No. No, no. I get it. But I get it. I get it. She's too old and she should she should bow out and she should not be running again. That's true. That's just flat out true. Uh, she, we need younger people running for office in the Democratic Party. And it's it's the U.S. Senate should not be a lifetime appointment. It just no. is wrong. No. Uh, so Californians that want to primary her and win and know that the Democratic nominee is going to be the senator. Right. Congratulations. You know, you're not flipping a seat in the U.S. Senate. In California, I got it. Uh, go for it. But uh, I don't know what you're going to do if it's Diane Feinstein <laughs> is the nominee. Are you going to go stay home? Uh, you've got a whole lot of other people on that ballot who need you. 
So, um, yeah, looks, I'm having, you know I'm having politics, man arguments here, I think, because... Politics is hard, honey. Politics is hard. Apparently, politics is hard and involves, like, making some very hard-headed decisions while at the same time retaining your idealism, learning for people that you don't necessarily like or love because yep. they're competent and better than the alternative, making adult choices between uh, imperfect alternatives, and shit like that, uh, which you don't have to do when you have 500 TV channels. You can just watch whatever you want whenever you want to. But in the world of politics... You have a practical limit on the parameters of your choices, mm -hmm. and you can either uh, accept that and try very hard over the course of your entire life, because that's how long it takes, to move the parameters left, to mm -hmm. move the acceptable level of conversation mm -hmm. to the left, which mm -hmm. you should. Mm -hmm. Or you can opt out and say you want no part of this, and that's fine too. But as I think Aristotle probably said, or maybe Plato, or one of those gentlemen, uh, you may not take an interest in politics, but politics will surely take an interest well, in you. Well, and I'm not willing to have my children go without health insurance while no. I'm waiting for Nirvana. I'm not willing to no. do that. So, no. this is um, where we, and that this is, is the... that has been the choice. You know, that was the choice in 2016, folks. Mm -hmm. The choice was between health insurance for my kids or Trump, and yep. that that was the vote that I made. And and that was the that was very that was crystal clear. Yep. That was a, a crystal clear vote. And if you voted for Donald Trump, you voted to take health care away from my kids. Yep. And that's I, I can never forgive that. Yep. Um but speaking of things you can't forgive. <laughs> um yes. let, let, let's dig into the deeper news. There's a little bit of Alex Jones here and that's that's fun. But let's go straight to Donald Trump telling everyone that first of all, Barack Obama was to blame for the lack of progress on gun control. Because yeah. blame the black guy. Right. And then almost in the next sentence, not quite in the next sentence, but certainly in the next thought bubble, that people should just start grabbing guns because fuck, you know, <laughs> due process, due process and probable cause, fuck that stuff. Eh, just grab them. Grab those guns. And it really is fascinating to watch a crazy person uh, with power just say whatever pops into his head. You know who uh, even noticed that? Tuck, even Tucker Carlson noticed that that was not a good idea. Yeah. And well, said it, if a Democrat I, said that, we'd be impeaching him. And, yes, we would. and I thought, wow, that's he's really crossed a the line then if you're willing to notice that if a Democrat did it, yes. you know, <laughs> it's gone that well, far. Ch and, but, Tucker knows. Tucker, Tucker Carlson knows what all Fox News employees know, which is tomorrow the, the waters of forgetfulness will close yeah. over the yeah. base and they'll forget it ever happened. We can get back to talking about Neil Gorsuch and tax cuts and how much liberals hate America. Right. In today's paper, in my state journal register today, the Ann Coulter column is on gun control, and it's about how liberals caused mass shooting. See? Why this, this piece Don't say of it. Awful, Don't say this, it. <laughs> why this gorgon, yeah. why this piece of human shit is in my newspaper and syndicated around the country is one of those many, many, many media mysteries that no one will ever give a straight answer to. No, they won't. And the answer, I believe on a certain level, I really do, that... People who make editorial decisions uh, in in these contexts are actually afraid of getting hurt by by I mean physically. Really? They're afraid of having the of, of having the shit beat. They're they're afraid of having the shit beat out of them if they take Ann Coulter out of the paper because hmm. they know those people are crazy and they're armed and they and they will come for you. Hmm. And I really do think that there's a certain physical menace that comes with um, being a Republican mm -hmm. that, that that people like Chuck Todd just never face in their real life. Yeah. And the idea that that there's going to be a mob of the same assholes who had Barack Obama's picture up as as a Nazi yeah. and talked about the blood of tyrants and walked around with their AK-47 strapped to their back because we can't you know, we came unarmed this time. Right. Um, that those people could show up at his door mm -hmm. uh, is something that. That I I'm think not that, willing you know, to emulate that part no, of it. No, I'm not either. Yeah. But I, I, no, I, my point being, it's, it has nothing to do with balance. Yeah. Ann Coulter's yeah. column balances out nothing. Let's not and, forget that the George W. Bush's Department of Homeland Security warned us in 2009. This was an ongoing investigation, and the report came out in April of 2009, which Barack Obama had been president for Two and a, a half minute. months, right? Mm -hmm. March, April, 2009. This report comes out from Department of Homeland Security that there's a tremendous danger from right-wing paramilitary organizations and that the threat of domestic terrorism from these groups is real. Yes. And Michelle Malkin and the rest of Fox News lost their collective shit they did. about how Barack Obama is trying to silence dissent mm -hmm. on the right by making all of us out to be terrorists. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. That's right. There was no more discussion. And and what categories of violence and shooting have gone up in the last 
since Trump has been president? Violence by white extremists, you know, anti-Semitism. All the things that these people hold dear to their hearts. So, yeah, they're not... The entire conservative media aren't domestic terrorists. They're domestic terrorist enablers. Yeah. <laughs> and they're and it's very profitable because they this this reminds me, this is the the penalty of having a long memory. This reminds me of the period right before Oklahoma City. Hmm. Because right wing talk radio was full of black helicopters and, and, and government conspiracies and they're out to get you and they murdered people in Waco and they're coming to get you and you should arm yourself. And it was frenzy, frenzy, frenzy all the time. The government's out to kill you. The government's out to destroy you. The, the, the Clinton liberal government is coming for you right now yeah. until someone blew up a fucking building. Right. And these same assholes said, oh, we, we never meant that. Yeah. Who, I, I don't know how these crazy people could take us uh, so misunderstand us so completely. No, the environment that, that Republican conservative talk radio created made that kind of feverish nonsense acceptable right up until somebody actually did it. Yep. And then they backed off, but they never learned their lesson. They went right back to Barack Obama's a terrorist, Barack Obama's a monster, or Barack Obama's coming for your guns, that gun sales go through the roof. Yep. And yep. this is who they are. This is not a one-off. This is who they've always been, and they've got to be stopped. And they have to be stopped fucking cold. And they have to they, they, come the midterms. And you mean electorally. I yes. mean electorally. We need to meet out a lesson that they will never forget. Well, and I asked you yesterday how... Is Fox News going to cover election night 2018? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. I have to believe um, there will be a lot of people. Let's see, that's in November. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing the war on Christmas will be going strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably even the war on Thanksgiving by that point. Um, and it'll, it'll be, be all well, about Nancy Pelosi. Well, we'll you know. talk, about, talk about last night. So we're watching. Oh, yeah. We're well, watching we're watching, this we, is, as we do, watching, mm -hmm. you know, MSNBC. Watching uh, Rachel Maddow and switching back and forth, and I said switch to Fox. You know, let's see what Fox is talking about. This so is research, it, by the way, people. So CNN is talking about tariffs. MSNBC is talking about tariffs and also the possibility that McMaster will leave. Mm -hmm. And on Fox News, it's Michelle Malkin talking about a group in Missouri. And you would think, oh, in mm. Missouri, uh, you would think, oh, it must be Moms Demand Action. How no. How it's are they affected little, by terror? It's this little group of people uh, talking about uh, in God we trust on our money uh -huh. <laughs> and keeping in God we trust in the city council building and winning. They won that war. And I went over to the Fox News Twitter stream today and reminded everyone that in God we trust is a Islamic thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the, the word trust appears several times in the Quran and in God We Trust can be perceived to have originated in Islam. Hmm. Well, and okay. Is, so, so the, the, the reaction in the midterms, the broadly speaking, is going to be distract, distract, distract. Because let's remember, these people don't want to govern. These no, people yeah. want to be martyrs. They want to feel oppressed. They want to be able to sit in their fucking barca lounges, farting away and complaining about how the liberal government, the, the one world liberal Obama government, has their boot on their throat. And is taking away their freedoms. And they cannot do that with a Republican House and a Republican Senate and a Republican president. Yeah. They can tell themselves that and they can watch Fox News and they can jerk off to it. But it, it is unsatisfying. Right. So they but need... I, I do think you're going to see a lot of Tommy Laren. Yeah. And I think you're going to see a lot of uh, mini skirted powders mm -hmm. uh, talking about those Californians and their their liberalism. They want to make America into a socialist hellhole, you know, and. Uh, and and denigrating it it will start immediately. Yeah. Uh, denigrating those who vote liberal and vote fraud. They're immigrant liberal. vote fraud. Immigrants are voting in record numbers. Exactly. Uh, blah 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 blah. And it, yeah. but what they will do is deny uh, the, the legitimacy of it, deny the effect and of it. Real Americans and didn't vote this way, right? George right. Soros and Saul Linsky combined yep. in the Great Afterlife the, to and and the uh, New Black Panther Party. <laughs> Yes, That's but it. here's what will happen. Your crazy Uncle Liberty and mine will immediately stop talking about sports and pretending that politics doesn't matter anymore and get yeah. right back up on that horse to defeat the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi is going to come and take all my shit away. They'll get real interested in, in, in politics once and they have a And count down to the biggest tax increase in history mm -hmm. when they undo the Donald Trump tax co cut. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let's blast through the news. Yeah. Um, uh, the, this is a big week for Jared Kushner <laughs> in a whole so many ways. But again, with the, the mask falls away from Devin Nunez, and you see he's just a criminal. 
Yeah. There's no hiding it anymore. He's just a fucking thug, and he's a criminal. Jared, Kush, uh, Jared Kushner is just a criminal uh, who has been apparently tr- – uh, he, he amassed $509 million in loans uh, from two lenders shortly after White House meetings with them. Um, and, and those are lenders, by the way, who are private equity people, so they want something for their money. Well, and he's broke. He's broken. Yeah. It was a shitload of money and has been going around the world begging for money and nobody would give it to him. And now he's in a position where they can, they can basically say, sure, I'll give you $200 million. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do for me. Right. And he's been right. doing this from inside the White House with highest possible security level clearance. He is the, a walking constitutional Time crisis. bomb. Time bomb against our national security. Absolutely. And at least four countries that we know of have privately discussed how they could play him for the chump that he is. Because right. he's, a, he's a complete idiot. He's an, He is the walking, talking example of inbred, nepotistic moron. And your, my favorite line from this week, really, of yeah. all of Twitter, was the one person who said Kushner's security clearance has been downgraded to Eric. To Eric, yeah. yeah. All right. And, Robert uh, Mueller. I'm going to move on. Clearly um, has, Robert Mueller has moved to dismiss 22 tax and bank fraud charges against Rick D- Gates. Guess who flipped? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the members of the House Intel Committee, uh, this is the Hope Hicks thing, said, we got bannoned. Yes, they did. Because uh, she walked in and said, nah, I'm not talking to you people, and walked out after eight hours. Well, and no, uh, it wasn't executive privilege. It was executive stonewalling. Right. I'm not going <laughs> to. And this is how you yeah. also know that they're, that they're all crooks, is that. Yeah. None of these people, every one of these people would be in Congress jail, would be held in yes. contempt of Congress if it were a Democrat. Every one Absolutely. of them Absolutely. They're all Republicans. They're all related to Donald Trump in some way, so they all get off the hook, and they all know it. Next item. It was Ben Carson's turn to remind the country that everyone in the stupid administration is a corrupt idiot. Yeah. Uh, HUD agreed to spend, he, under, he directing HUD, agreed to spend $165,000 on lounge furniture and $31,000 on a dining set for the HUD uh, secretary's office, mm-hmm. while the Trump administration proposed a $6.8 billion tax cut. They have canceled the order for the dining set Yes, um, and are reusing furniture in the HUD basement, which, of yeah. course, there is. And how they found out about um, it is They didn't so say adorable. anything about the lounge furniture. Um, also, in a related story... Uh, the EPA director, uh, who is addicted to flying first class, right? What's his name again? Uh, Scott Pruitt. Scott Pruitt. Thank you. Scott Pruitt uh, said, oh, yeah, you know what? My, I'm telling my security detail to find alternative ways for me to ma- remain secure, mm-hmm. starting with my next flight. Yeah, that's great. That doesn't mean he's going to stop flying first class. Folks. No. So that just, no. yeah, he's... He's uh, neither one of these guys, and they didn't mention the lounge furniture either with Ben Carson. He well, canceled the dining set. The thing about Ben Carson that cracked me up was how this got out is that he demoted is, somebody. Exactly, for whistleblowing. Yes, so this is, an, again, an employment story. Right, right. right. He demoted them because they refused to spend $5,000 on a fucking chair. For- More than a $5,000. Yeah. yeah, the spending limit on improvements to the office. And, and of course, the drapes cost 3500 So, yeah, it's... It's uh, bad. You put, you put it, you put, again, you're putting complete corrupt idiots in charge of everything. And, well, and let's talk about Chris Liu, because he was on MSNBC this week. He is. Ted Liu? No, I mean Chris Liu. Oh. Uh-huh. Chris Liu was a secretary to the cabinet uh, in, under okay. Obama. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, in other words, an administrator of the cabinet activity, not right. a secretary of any department. Right. But in charge of making sure that the cabinet room and so forth, that cabinet members did what they were supposed to do, uh, administrated. He was the administrator of the cabinet as a unit. Right. And he was on talking about this whole Ted, uh, this whole HUD furniture thing and said to Chris Hayes. uh, In fact, he amazed Chris Hayes. He said, we were not allowed to ride the Acela to New York City from Washington. Mm -hmm. I personally, he said. I personally approved or disapproved every single trip any cabinet member or their spouse made. Uh-huh. And Chris Hayes went, wow, really? <laughs> yes, Which is why, really? <laughs> as Barack Obama pointed out this week, yes. uh, there were no scandals in his administration. Yeah, except for Fast really and weren't. Furious and Solyndra yes. well, and Solyndra, Benghazi. of course. Why, you, you liberals... Brag about remembering things, but you don't remember shit that never happened. Right, right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, moving on. Uh, this is a little bit of good news. 
House and Senate Democrats introduced legislation to reverse the FCC repeal of net neutrality rules. And there were several now, Republicans now saying that uh, Trump's tariffs are not going to happen. They will override that. Uh, there is also a uh, one Republican congressman, I believe it was, who said that he could pretty much guarantee a veto-proof vote uh, in favor of NAFTA. Now, you can like NAFTA or or hate NAFTA. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot to hate about NAFTA, but Donald Trump just deciding willy-nilly to do away with trade agreements overall is a bad idea uh, without yeah. without thought and discussion and what's good and what's bad and what we need to keep. It's uh, It doesn't do farmers any good. It doesn't do our uh, relationship with Canada and Mexico any good. And uh, not that those things aren't at an all-time low anyway, but anything that we can do to sort of limit Trump's power, I think, at this point is a good thing. And uh, he he pretty much said a veto-proof majority of the Congress, bipartisan, would protect NAFTA. Now, well, and, and that that applies. To, I mean, the tariffs is an excellent example. That happened today. Yep. That just Donald Trump pulled out of his ass that we're going to have tariffs yesterday afternoon. Have yeah, and the yes, numbers sorry, came right out of his ass too. Right. Yeah. Right. And today. The news is full of all the people who were bypassed on the way to this decision. There was no vetting. The, no. the numbers in were never the White crunched. House. No one in the White House yeah. knew. Yeah. Uh, well, and it turned out Wilbur Ross. Oh. Uh, you know, now that John Kelly is busy looking for another job, and everyone else is clear. All the people who were there to keep crazies out of the office because they'll tell Donald mm-hmm. Trump that Martians are coming. Yeah. Um, Wilbur Ross apparently got in there and said, "You know what you should do? Pick a fight over tariffs." Yeah. And he said, "Fuck yeah, let's do that." Because you know they have ve- they have a lot of vested interest in the steel industry. Yep. A lot of his friends are deeply invested in that in, in that market. Carl so let's Icon do that. sold his interest in a yeah. steel related industry earlier this that, week. Isn't that That's nice. the guy who bailed Trump out of the casino mess he got himself into. Yeah. So one asshole uh, s- s- snuck into the Oval Office, whispered tariffs mm-hmm. to the crazy man, and without any numbers, without any analysis, without any economic impact, without consulting with anybody, Donald Trump just announced that we're going to have fucking tariffs, and let's let's roll with that. Mm-hmm. And it succeeded in distracting people from the fact that his entire family are corrupt grifters right. for about a minute. About a minute. But then people said, well, wait a minute. I got something to ask you about Melania. <laughs> it turns out she was granted a green card in 2001 under this program that's supposed to be reserved for those with extraordinary ability. It's the Einstein it's... visa. <laughs> yeah, it's the Einstein <laughs> visa. She hides it really well. She really does. She she has, Um, you know, it's her tremendous sense of privacy that keeps her from talking about her Nobel Prize in physics. Yes. And and, and it's extraordinary ability and sustained national and international acclaim. (laughs) I don't think Donald Trump knows what any of those words mean. No, but But, but apparently the people that do know about that said, yeah, a Nobel Prize is usually what you have when you get that visa. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Or something, something chrome off a trailer. (laughs) Yeah. Something, something, um, something about nice. black holes. Something about uh, that's not anyway. nice. That's not nice. No. I'm not a nice guy. I've never pretended to be otherwise. Russian operatives compromised election systems in seven states prior to the 2016 election, and yet the NSA director told lawmakers he has not received orders from Trump to stop Russian hacking targeting U.S. elections. He's been given no additional responsibilities or duties or funding in that regard. No. And that's treason. That's treason. Period. No, and I was going to say the other treason. thing is the, yeah. the Russian sanctions have a veto-proof majority, too. Yeah. And he's just decided not to do it. This is a uh, banana Republican, banana mm-hmm. Republic, and uh, mm-hmm. got to be stopped. Okay, next one. Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant Governor in Georgia threatened to kill a tax cut for Delta Airlines after Delta decided it was not going to give NRA members gun discounts. And the, the, being... the state legislature in Georgia passed that, by the way. I'm waiting for Delta to uh, really? have a bidding. Yeah, have a bidding more yeah. like like uh, Amazon does. Yeah. Where, where do you want our hub to go? Because the, the governor of Virginia, the Democratic governor of Virginia, our new gov- governor in Virginia, already tweeted, come on over. Sure. <laughs> You kidding me? Yeah. Hey, let me let me just give you a hint. Springfield technically has an international technically airport. Technically have an international airport. Come on up, Delta. Come on. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Me? The, the Chicago area has been talking about a third airport for yep. years. Come on up. We'll hook you up. Don't worry about it. Boeing is here. You can buy your shit here. It's great. Um, the Supreme Court told Donald Trump to go pound sand when it came to Donald. Yep. Which is nice. Yep. Nope. Sorry, not going to hear a case. Go back. Do it right. Shut up and go away, which is nice. Well, and, and again, as long as his base thinks he did something to keep the Muslims out, 
right. we're all set. Trump is attacking Jeff Sessions again for not locking up his political enemies. And right. uh, Jeff Sessions retaliated by having lunch with Rod Rosenstein mm-hmm. <laughs> or dinner or what? Yeah, yeah dinner, I think it was uh, yes. on camera. So, uh, yeah, that's that. That's real pleasant there. I don't. I really. This is like Alien versus Predator. I don't yeah. know who to root no. for because they're both so, so awful. fucking yes. awful. So yes. awful. Um, now remember, it was literally less than a week ago that the House Intel Committee released that redacted version of the Democratic memo rebutting the crazy ass lies that Devin Nunes released as the Republican memo. I'm basically that stress less- eating all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that was less than a week ago. Here. I'm just you know, frosting, yeah. <laughs> pie. Ice cream, just cookie dough, you know, whatever. That, whatever. Just, raw just eggs. stress eating all the time. Yep. I look over at my cat and go, "You gonna you finish that? <laughs> you gonna finish that? Got 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 a little cream cheese on a plate. Gonna finish that? Terrible." Um, right. Mueller's team is now focusing on whether Donald Trump and his team knew about the hacked Democratic emails before they were publicly released. Which he that's did. That's important. That's that's really important because right there is the nexus of collusion and conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Right there is where you have an impeachment. There's a whole bunch of other things to impeach every one of these fuckers on. But this is the actual connection between Trump and Russia. Right. Trump and Russia. Yep. And yep. if he knew and had anything to say about when it was going to be released, as Don Jr. just stated in the email, this would be great around the end of the summer. And Roger Stone said, you know, yep. days before, right. you know, this it's time to, to release the Kraken, right. and the Kraken was released. Yeah. Yeah. And you go on television and say, hey, Russia, if you're if listening. you're listening, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Trump's re-election campaign used a photo of one of the survivors from the school shooting in an email soliciting campaign donations. Yeah, because we haven't gone low enough yet. No, we, there's still many, many lowers to go. Yep, yep. Uh, the lowest really this week for me was was the leaking of one senator's texts right. uh, from the opposite party by the House. I mean, that's just kind of. Wow. Yeah, that's just wow. That really is just oh, you're not, your you're own not institution, gonna... the institution of which you are a part. You're going to shit. You're, you're shitting in your own bed. You know, you literally well, have is... no problem taking a dump in in your place. In your office, your own office. If you and, and I'm going to stretch the analogy here, but it's actually pretty close. If you ever wondered what it was like to live in the South mm-hmm. and watch a trial, watch a trial, watch the, To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, right, right. Where you knew, you knew the judge, the jury, and the sheriff and, were all guilty and all in on yep. it. And, and the accuser was the villain. Yep. And the accused was innocent. And you stand by helplessly going, how can this possibly be happening? Well, it's happening because... Everyone involved in the justice system is in, on, system it. Is in yep. on it. Everyone is corrupt, and they're all cool with it. Yep. Yep. Um, if you ever wonder what that would feel like uh, experientially, you're living through it right, right now. now. And as a white person in America who didn't wasn't alive during that time, mm-hmm. that you're right. That is the analogy that I would use. It's like, oh my God, they're all in on it. They're all in it, and they're all okay. With it. They're all they're open all about okay it. About they don't it. care yeah, because they're they have the power the, to do it. So they're going through the ritual of a trial. They're going through the ritual yeah. of a courtroom, but they have no intention of honoring any of the principles that they're supposed to be fighting for because they're all corrupt, all of yep. them. And they're, and they're making they it really to easy go. to decide what side you're on. You have a letter after your name. If you have an you know R after amazing? your name, you're in on it. You know what's really amazing, Blue Gal? All this started only two years ago. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> the minute Donald Trump came down the escalator, the Republican Boom. Party went to shit. It just did. Yeah, it just did. We don't know how it happened yeah. or why. Something magical. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Newt Gingrich is writing op-eds about how Donald Trump had an awesome week. And there's a reason why he announced his re-election campaign this week. This particular he, week it will be remembered in history. As the week he made Boom Boom all by himself in the boys' room. <laughs> You know what happens every week, Each though. week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week, our Internet Kitty is named Zane Gray. And Zane Gray is portrayed here in pastels. It's a work of art showing Zane Gray. This The person that sent in her kitty said, A colleague at a museum where I work drew Zane Gay- Gray as a project. And loves making portraits of people's pets. What a cool idea. So we have yeah. artwork of Zane Gray. And Zane Gray is this week's Internet Kitty. You can visit Zane Gray at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. 
Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. You can follow me at Twitter at, at BlueGal. You can follow Drift Glass at Twitter at Mr. MR underscore Electrico. And our podcast Twitter account is at ProLeft Podcast. And that is just the announcement of shows. So feel free to follow us there. Mm -hmm. We thank you for sharing our show on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media you like. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties strongly recommend Black Panther along with every other cat-based movie. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.